Hi everyone, I am Cal from Cal's Creations and I thought I would do a little surprise uh, pop-up video. This was completely unplanned, so I thought, because I'm trying to go through a lot of different designs and pulling signs, I'm like, I really don't have time to kind of plan these out, you know, one for my private group, one for the public group. So um, as I get stuff in, I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing some new designs with you. I'm gonna challenge you to some out of the box thinking, some unusual color palettes. So today we're gonna kind of mix this one up a little bit. Um, we're using this, what do we say it was? 10 inch sign? 10 and a half, half inch sign. Yeah, 10 and a half inch sign. This came from Shore Life Creations. Um, she is on Etsy. We're gonna incorporate um, some purple floral. So I believe what I have is um, they're like a pansy type of floral. We're gonna put in some white filler, some lavender, some heather, and kind of pull that purple in. Um, the ribbon, we're doing lavender, white, and black for the color palette. So I think it's gonna set the tone for a really nice um, everyday wreath. So this is great for someone who is looking for a last minute gift. Um, not something that's like seasonal, like a Mother's Day gift where you can only use it on Mother's Day, mm -hmm or you buy some of the florals and then they only last for a week and then they're gone. So this would make a great gift idea. So before I get started, this is in the public group. So you can feel free to um, like and share if you like the design and you wanna replicate that or maybe kind of put it in your own inventory. Sharing it to your page is a lot easier um, for finding it than trying to go back into my videos and Try to figure out what you know what day of the week was that particular video or you can always go to my youtube channel which is cats creation 777 and then all the videos are they should be in line um based on the date so this is saturday may the 16th so um i want to welcome you for this surprise treat youtube oh youtube subscribers if you are catching this live it is not an actual live on youtube we will do one, one of these days for YouTube once we get everything else figured out. So if you are catching this video and you wanna comment, that's fine. Go ahead and put your comments in the comment box. I go through those daily and I respond to any comments you have. Um, if you want to catch a live, I am, my regular day and time is Friday at five. Um, that's Pacific time, seven central and 8 p.m. Eastern time. So if you want to know all the details of like what we're describing in the YouTube video, just hit the description box below and it'll outline everything that you need to know where everything kind of came from or like where the sign came from, um, how to purchase this design or look at my shop, go to my website, everything will be below. Did I miss anything else? Nope. Okay, so. We have, have Gail. Hi Gail. Sharon. Hi Sharon. Melody. Hi, Melody. Amy, Melody, uh, Karen, Judy, Peggy, Kathy, Tony. Tony, Tony said you look so pretty tonight because you're matching. Oh, yeah. We uh, just kind of went with the color theme. Yeah. Uh, Marie, Debbie, Carol, Patty, Julie, Sandy, Wanda. Julie said love the colors. And Mary. Perfect. And it's funny because um, if you guys remember, I did the blue welcome that was on a rail. And so she has other colors and I'm a huge purple and black fan. If you guys don't know it, those are my two favorite colors. So when I saw this design, I was like, okay, I have to do something with that sign, whether it turns into a grapevine floral. And then um, I found this ribbon that just came out on Craft Outlet and it immediately clicked based on the sign. I'm like, okay, the sign and the ribbon have to be incorporated. So this is where the color palette idea came from. So we're gonna start with a 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame. Um, you guys have seen the setup before. I just pick the pipe cleaners for color just because it looks nicer. It also shows it better on camera. So we're gonna take and we're just gonna wire the last of our six sections. So you take your pipe cleaner, you're going to wire together the two innermost ones and then this prevents movement once you go ahead and twist that onto the two that way you don't have to glue them it's just an extra step that you don't have to go through 
um, in order to make them secure. And then using the middle and this weld mark, I'm gonna wire the two outer ones together. Why are you doing that? Mary said, watching from West Virginia, several family members love purple. Oh. Sharing with Sue Smith, Patty, Weigel, uh, Ellie, Shrout, and Karen. Nice, I know, I love purple. <clears throat> so thank you for sharing. So thank you for joining. So also, if you are a new person just catching us today for the first time, let us know. And we'd like to welcome you to our group. And where you're from, city and state, because you never know, a lot of connections with other crafting people are made through Facebook Lives. So um, you never know, you might have a crafting buddy just down the street who you're gonna meet on the Facebook Live today. Yep, hi girls, just join in and then uh... Melody said, Kat, your nails are purple too. They're kind of like plum purple, huh? Yeah, the colors, like, yesterday was my first exposure to gel nail polish. So, um, my daughter and then Paulina, which is my adopted daughter, um, they were kidding around with me about how amazed I was with gel nail polish and why, you know, why it reacts the way that it does. And they were like, Mom, it's gel. That's the way it's supposed to be. And I'm like, okay, well... <laughs> That's my only exposure to gel. And the first time you used it under that ultraviolet. Yeah, and you light. put it under the, the blue light, and within 30 seconds, your nails are completely dry. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that was my, my highlight moment. So we're taking a lavender metallic. This came from Craft Outlet. These are cut to 25 inches. We're going to do the cruffle method, and we're going to just lay in a base of pure like lavender. We're going to take that lighter shade. Um, because it'll pull from just the subtle the subtle parts of our sign. It's not quite the same palette as the welcome part, but we're picking up the lighter colors from here. I did pair, I tried to pair this up with a darker purple and then a black with um, white banding in it, and it didn't really pop the colors of the sign like the lavender did. So that's why we're pulling from this. So Cruffle Method. Um, if you guys don't know, it's half ruffles, half curls. So you're just going to take the ends of your deco mesh. You're going to roll them three, four, five, about five times. You can use a chip clip or a um, clothespin or binder clip or whatever. Mm -hmm. You want to just hold that one end and we're rolling it in the direction that the deco mesh is already cut to. So it kind of makes it handy if you get them a little closer to the end roll, because then they roll really nice. And then you're going to ruffle or scrunch that, pull that other ruffle together. And then what it does is it kind of confines the cut edges on both sides so that you don't have as much fraying. Um, because every time you expose a cut edge of deco mesh, you're going to have fraying. So we try to counter that by um, using a wood burning tool to cut these at 25 inches. So I will be doing a class on how to do wood burning tool, um, why we do it, what are some of the um, other ways you can kind of prevent fraying. So we might do a class just on um, how to prevent fraying and deco mesh. Awesome, yeah, there's a couple new gals, seems like Lisa Bowen says hello from Wachula, Florida. Welcome, Lisa. Karen said, first time Edgewater Park, Park, New Jersey. Oh, thanks for joining and then, us. Um, we've got Sandy Spencer from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Welcome, Sandy. So awesome, welcome. Yes, I, and we're, we're trying to try to find a way to tap into some West Coast um, viewers because we're, we're really popular with the East Coast and I'm just trying to figure, figure out what do we need to do to pull you know, folks that are like in Washington, <clears throat> Oregon, uh, California, Nevada, Texas, Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. So you guys are going to see us kind of play with different time slots with these little pop-up videos. So um, that's what we're kind of hoping to do. Yep. And then there was a Sandy that says hi also for Sandy from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So. Hi, Sandy. So you're going to see one two three four five i just kind of pick a spot i generally start in the middle and then i will um just kind of go up and down all the way through until 
um, I get complete. Hold on, three, four. Um, and you can see that as you get sometimes closer to your end, end, um, like this was the last piece I cut off of it, um, you kind of have to fight the end piece a little bit because sometimes it might be folded the opposite way. So again, using the cruffle method will really help. Go ahead and move your sign off so they can see you. Oh, okay. Only you over. know where the boundaries are. Yep, that's why I moved it. Thank <laughs> you. So the nice thing <laughs> about doing it live is you can ask Steve to do specific things like, hey, can you zoom in on what she's doing? Um, so that we can respond, you know, accordingly if we can, <clears throat> depending upon what we're doing. So while I'm doing this, this is a great opportunity for you guys to ask questions if you have any. So I'm always using something to hold down my deco mesh to keep it from rolling back up. Mm -hmm. and getting in the way. <clears throat> Donetta, she's making a deco mesh uh, crumple design wreath with florals in it. Yeah, this one's going to have a, quite a bit. Well, it'll have some florals. Mm -hmm. How many florals, I won't know because this is just, you kind of, like when you have a design in mind, you usually have an inspiration piece, which was from the sign. And then, of course, the ribbon goes hand in hand with that. Um, and then you start pulling different things, like your ribbon colors. And you're like, okay, those look good. Um, what else do we want to do? Do we want to do a bow? Do we not want to do a bow? Do you want to add florals to it? Um, yep. Do you want to do deco mesh? So, and um, Donetta and Suzanne, the sign is from Shore Lab Creations on Etsy. I just I created just, a pin. No, I just posted it. Okay. I, I didn't pin it, but perfect. I can, I guess, for a little bit. I'll do that. So now it's pinned for a little bit. There you go. So she has some amazing signs. So I'm just kind of going through. I literally have two tubs of signs sitting in my craft room. And so I'm just grabbing the sign and I'm like, okay, I bought this sign for a reason. So now we need to create them. One, two, three, four, five. So I usually roll five each side and then I'll cruffle whatever's left or ruffle. One, two, three four, five, and then this way it kind of gives you, um, it's a very full but very flat kind of wreath, yep. um, but it covers well. And then if you have really good quality deco mesh like this, um, it's going to fill in really super nice. So our goal is always to make sure that we can find our pipe cleaners because the lavender ones almost match this to a T. Yep. Debbie, this is a... <clears throat> This is a Dollar Tree 14 inch wreath form. Mm -hmm. There's 18 ties total. There are 12 on the outside and six on the inside. Yeah, I totally forgot to do that and one. And the cruffles um, are 25 inches. Yep. Yeah, I was actually, like I said, it was just a, a fluke thing. I'm like, you know, we wake up every Saturday now and we're like, we can't really go anywhere because in California we're still in lockdown mode. Um, we could pick food up from, you know, uh, one of our local restaurants, but um, that's all we can do. We can't go in, we can't go shopping. Well, Target and Walmart, Lowe's and Home Depot, right? That's pretty much it. While everyone else is able to go out and eat in smaller portions here in this lovely state of California, um, they won't let us out yet. <laughs> Yep. And Darlene, I think you can see when she does it, she puts the finished edges that are not curled in um, facing inside and outside. Yeah. And then the curled parts are side by side. Yeah. So, to explain that, these are the finished. So here and here, I put those towards the center and towards the outside. Again, yep. just to prevent additional fraying because the only the only place that it's cut now is confined within those curls so this is why that method works so well yeah we're all the same boat we they said new york too we can't eat out of the restaurants mm -hmm. michigan they're still in lockdown yep and then heidi 
Um, I've got it kind of zoomed in a little bit. She, she puts three, it's basically three pipe cleaners in each section. There's six sections, so that's your 6, 12, and 18. Mm -hmm. And then the two sections on the outside, she ties, I guess it's form three and four to each other. And then yeah. on the inside, it's, it's rail or form one, and, one two. and two. Right. So we always number them starting with the inner most um, rail. So like Steve's saying in each section, you'll use the weld marks to kind of find a middle ground for the first two, right? That gives you your inner. And then you'll use your inner and then either the rail to the left or the rail to the right to can. then center the two outer ones. Yep. And then that will kind of give you a, a pretty good even spacing all the way around. And she's really gone through so many different wreath um, designs that this is pretty universal for a lot of the wreaths she makes. That's why she likes this design so much. So it's, that's why it's 12 on the outside. Six on the inside. Mm -hmm. You can vary it. There is no cut and dry method for any one particular thing. Um, I'm just trying to remember, like I've been doing this, this will be going on my third year. Um, I started the business side of this in September of 2017. So almost three years. Um, and I just try to remember what it was like to start the wreath making process. I could totally push all this stuff aside and use work frame, uh, the really nice work frame race, or um, kind of take it up a notch. Mm -hmm. But most people that are interested in learning wreath making, they, they work on a lower budget. They want an, they want availability. They need to know where to find it, what's the good. You know, they're looking at us to kind of help them through all the beginner experiences that we went through, like where not to buy deco mesh, um, just just trying to keep it uh, realistic for you. Yep. Two, three, four, and we will. We'll eventually, like you know, throw something in there a little high tech. But sometimes what I find is um, the average person is like it's so above and beyond what I even know how to do. Like when I first started. I didn't know deco mesh. I only knew grapevine and evergreens. So I was like, well, what is deco mesh? And you've been making wreaths for years and years. Mm -hmm. Just doing the evergreens and grapevines. So deco mesh was new, but I love it now. It just allows you so much more creativity in what you can come up with. And it really holds up nice to the outside. Two, three, four. Wow. Debbie, yeah, uh, we used a wood burner. In fact, I was the one who did all the wood burning for this. He did. You just, he allowed me you, to cut my ribbons. Yep, you have your wood burner tool and you just you pull it on on your big 36 inch mat. You have to make sure you have a glass tempered cutting board that you use. And then you just use your chisel tip point of your wood burner and just, it cuts through the deco mesh really easily. Mm -hmm. She's going to do another wood burning uh, yeah, class. Yeah, a whole class on just how to reduce the amount of fraying. We'll probably do some beginner classes again, and then I think that will help. Because there's people who use impulse sealers, which for me, I don't know about you guys, but I'm always stuck with space. I don't have an awful lot of space, mm. probably because I buy too much ribbon, um, and that <laughs> takes up the majority of my space, or signs, or embellishments, or your finished products, so. Five, six. Um, when you use an impulse sealer, that's, I mean, it's a large, it's a large piece of machinery. It's kind of why I shy away from the Easy Bow Maker. It's just a lot of space. You can't pack it up. It's not compact. Um, Provo's great because you can, you know, throw it all back in the box. Um, same thing with the Bodabra. So it's just designer mm -hmm. preference. Mm -hmm. Heidi asked, do you have a video on how to put the ties on? Uh, In a private group, I think you do from quite a while ago. Yeah. Two, three, four, five. You mean like what we just did? Yeah, it's really simple. Um, I think if you probably go back and watch some of my beginner videos from 2018. So just go to YouTube and, you know, type in Cats Creation 777 and then like scroll down. Just hit the video tab and go all the way back to the beginning and look there because I think when I first started, 
um, I showed you how to wire the whole thing. And then just over three years time, it's like you can scale that back to say, look, I'll show you how to do one section and then we can move on with the actual yeah. um, tutorial. And then Patricia, um, she asked, how do you decide on how long you cut your deca mesh for some ruffles? Some you make it 30, some you make it 25 inches long. Just her preference. A designer preference, but also the materials you have. Yeah. So like the deco mesh that I'm using right now is... Um, the lavender high foil. It's Yeah, it's a higher foil metallic because the foils are wider and then it's spaced every fourth row. So, and then knowing that I purchased this from Craft Outlet, you'll start to understand texture and feel. And then by doing 25, that's probably like the shortest minimum you can get by with doing cruffles because you want them to still have the, the look of, it's almost like you did ruffles with curls on top of it, but you're just doing it in one step. So if I was using a thinner quality deco mesh, I would go with 30, maybe even 35. But once you start doing that, so your average roll of deco mesh is Five, 30 feet. Yeah. 30 feet. So what that will yield you on a 18 uh, pipe cleaner wreath is 20 pieces. Mm -hmm. Or 18 pieces cut at 20 inches. And then at that point, you have to have another roll. Yeah. So even doing 25 inch cruffles, it's going to take you like a roll and maybe uh, a, yeah, a third. And yeah. then if you were doing 30 inch, you're going to need two. Yeah. This is about a roll and a half for the 25 inch. Right. So it just depends and you'll be able to tell over time, oh, this is a thinner deco mesh, but I really want the look of cruffles on here. So make sure you have, um, like some of the fabric mesh, yep. I would use 30 inch cruffles on that, um, just because it's a little thinner. So this is very um, stiff, it's very thick, which is really good for doing this method. And Heidi, you could also go back to the very beginning of the video when she just put the three ties on, and you could just kind of zoom in, because I did zoom in when she did it. Mm -hmm. And it's really just watch how she did those three and you just cop copy easy. and paste. So let me think if there was anything that I missed. Hi Lynetta, hi gals just joining, hi Wilhelmine. I'm trying to think of like what else did I miss covering? Wilhelmine said my husband and I were just talking about how much ribbon I have today. Uh, then guess what came to the door? A ribbon, ribbon. delivery. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was thinking the same thing too because I was like, um, found two new places to buy product from. So those are coming, I think, Tuesday. So we'll have to do an unboxing because those are some pretty hefty orders. And sadly, most of it's ribbon. <laughs> um, one of it is actually florals. So I went to a wholesale place online just to see what kind of quality florals they have. I really need to get my butt down to Shinoda. Because they have, I mean, to be able to walk into a giant warehouse filled with everything a wreath maker could possibly ever want, um, picking up some really nice florals, like I want to get back to doing another tropical wreath. So we did one one year for summer mm -hmm. and just pulled out like birds of paradise and um, I'm trying to think of what the the name of the flower is, oh, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, we used some tiger lilies. Um, I'm trying to think of Hawaiian flowers. Are you talking about the big red flower or um, what? Hibiscus we used. Mm -hmm. um, so just going and getting stuff that you know, if you were to walk through, I don't know, a Hawaiian floral shop, those would be the different types of florals that you would see. And going through some of my craft stash, I actually found a really cute tiki mask. So we want to incorporate him in that summer design. Mm -hmm. So I think we're gonna try to schedule that for next Friday's live. So Plumeria and uh, Plumeria. Alpinia. Yeah. Plumeria, thank you. And then we did, what is it? It's called the Monst Monstra 
M-O-N-S-T-R-A leaves, the mm -hmm. ones that have the giant cuts in the leaves. Yeah. So just making sure that everything stays pretty authentic to what it is that you're creating. So there you guys go. That's exactly what you're going to get. Why do we have an extra one? Do this one? I'm looking. Oh, I, I did cut an extra one. Did you? Yeah, you're Okay, because I was like, there's one left. Um, so yeah, one extra left. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build the bow so we can see how much space. And then what by adding the bow before the sign allows you to kind of manipulate and move your sign so it's not necessarily you know right in the center and then you have the bow right above you can kind of play with the placement so i'm going to kind of take this to the side and pull out my bow dabra and we're going to pull all the ribbon that we're using today and i'll tell you where it all came from so the two and a half inch I always do when I'm doing a fairly full bow, I will use two two and a half and four one and a half inch rolls of ribbon. I try to coordinate the colors. Um, let me make sure. I think they all came. Uh, all of them came from Craft Outlet oh. except for the lavender, but you can probably get this on Craft Outlet as well. It came from the race shop. So right now, and I looked before we went live, Craft Outlet, is disabled for ordering. It just means that they got a lot of orders in the week. And they don't want them to all start piling up for the weekend. Um, so it allows them to ship them fairly quick. So then what you can do is I play with the placement of the ribbon beforehand to kind of figure out how I want to see my color stack. Um, I think I want the black right on top of the purple. And you can kind of just play with placement if you want. Um, and I usually always try to finish with, I think I'm liking that design, which is black and white, black and white. Yeah, that's pretty. And purple. And then I try to <clears throat> break it, break it up or introduce a solid in here somewhere. So that's going to be the layout of bottom to top. So what I'm saying is finding an interesting focal point is because the top ribbon is what you're gonna see most, like here, you wanna make sure that that's a pattern over a um, solid. It just looks visually interesting that way. So we are going to take this and we're gonna cut our dovetail. You don't have to do a dovetail, you can do an angle cut but I would encourage you to do some sort of cut because it just looks nicer. It, it shows that you, play, you know, paid attention to your ribbon to put details in that as well. So to cut a dovetail, wired edges together, you're gonna cut from the fold to the point, and then that gives you a perfect cut. It'll also help all of your Christmas packages this year look really amazing. And I'm gonna go 10 inches. And so with the Bodabra, everything is about the twist. So we start right side up. We twist so that we have wrong side um, facing us. And then we're gonna do five and a half inch loop. So I usually keep my Bodabra right on the 10 inch. So I'm lining up the center here with the 10 inch line on my ruler. So then when I'm pulling my fabric out, and let's bring this back a little bit. When I pull my fabric out, I can measure and see, okay, this is hitting four and a half inches, or five and a half, sorry. And doing it here, and twisting, and then you just constantly measure. So I just find that if you get a really good base, like measuring your ribbon, then your overall bow at the end is going to look fairly nice. So we just dovetail both of those. And it just depends on you as the designer. If you like deep V cuts, then, you know, come up a little higher. If you don't, then, you know, kind of space it out. 
I like them to be a little bit on the deep side. A lot of the, a lot of the gals have said purple is their favorite color. I know. Susie just said the same thing. Purple is my favorite calming. color. Very calming. Very calming. So does blues too. I like blues. And yellows are happy. So I see yellows are for uh, summer lemonade. Mm -hmm. So again, we're doing our twists. These are nine and a half inch. So I'm taking each ribbon up on the tail length by a half an inch with each ribbon that I add. So the white and the black was 10 inches. Now this one's nine and a half. Right, with five and a half inch loops. And then now I'm making five inch loops. So I'm kind of doing that even on the loops because when you're building your bows from top to bottom, you kind of want to see a graduation as it comes up to the top mm -hmm. of it getting shorter. It doesn't have to. It just kind of looks more appealing to the eye mm -hmm. that way. I love this ribbon. And I think it comes an inch and a half length as well. So if you don't like the two and a half, you can get the inch and a half. And there we go. And I use um, straight pins to hold my ribbon edges. It just kind of prevents your ribbon from getting kinked. Like when I first started, all I used was um, rubber bands. But I found that if you get the inch pins with the little ball ends at Walmart, you get like a whole little box of like 400 of them. It's perfect for helping hold the ends of your ribbon together. And they just hold nicer. So this is gonna be nine inches. And then we're gonna do four and a half inch loops on this one. So there's my four and a half. Any other questions, Charles? Four and a half. A little bit longer. And then we're right to nine. Do our tails. Of course, Gail said earlier that both Lev and Alec screamed, Hi, Cat. <laughs> hi, Alec. Hi, Lev. I know. What's for dinner at, at Gail's house today? I'm like, sometimes she sets the stage where I'm like, oh, that sounds good. I think we'll have dinner. But yesterday they had chicken parmesan and pizza. I was like, that sounds really good. Mm. I'll miss, oh, I miss restaurants. Just, just to be able to go out. One, two, three. So I'm on my fourth. This one's eight and a half inches. And we're going to do the exact same loop length. So we're going to do four and a half on this one. These are the only two that I make exactly the same. The very first two inch and a half ones. So if you put your fingers through them and pull, because you've already measured the bottom one, um, you're good with the second one. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Melissa said, hi, Kat. First time watching live from New Jersey. Hi, Melissa. Usually, There's someone else on here from New Jersey, too. Yeah, quite a few. Uh, she says, usually catches replays. I have learned so much from watching you. Oh, thank you. I am going to be like, I am challenging myself this year to get out of my comfort zone and to tackle some things that are challenging. So um, if you guys can, like and follow this page. Number one, it gives you notifications when I go live, like this pop-up one, for instance. Um, I try to put it out there as, as soon as I know I'm going to do something. Um, obviously, we can't go live from inside Joanne's or Michael's or anything right now, um, but we can from Shinoda. Mm -hmm. So we'll try to get down there maybe next weekend, like Saturday. Yeah, because it's before the, the holiday, right? So eight inch tails. This is now going to be a four inch loop. And um, where was I going with that thought? Oh, liking and following gives you notifications, but 
I'm gonna also ask you guys to challenge me. So if there's a design that you have just been dying to see somebody create, um, you're gonna see a post go out this week saying, what would you like to challenge me to break down and figure out how to make? Kathy said, is Shinoda open? Uh, yes, yes it is. I actually reached out to the people at Shinoda when I saw them posting stuff and um, they had posted something on Instagram and said, um, we have reduced hours, you know, due to COVID. But their warehouse, I think, is 165,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So um, I you think we hard. tried to get through it all when Gail was here. And we got there at what, like 9? And they closed it too. And they were there till 2. And we were there till 2. <laughs> got stuck in the ribbon aisle for a long time. But um, I don't think we saw everything. So I'm super excited to go there during, when is it, like August, September, because they start to pull out the fall, they start to pull out the Christmas, mm -hmm. um, and that's where it just kind of gets you in the mood for that. Chrissy, yes, we are in California. We are in Victorville, California. Yep. So this is, the, so this is the last one, so it's a seven and a half inch tail, and it'll be a three and a half inch loop. So this has taken us all the way up to the top. And then I'll show you how to fluff this. And there we go. Trying to make sure that we're right on our money with our measurements. So yeah, that's the only place that's open. But it's my happy place. I just need to go visit. It just takes us a long time to drive there. It's what, an hour and 40 minutes? Yeah, about that. But then when we're down there, we usually do fun things like go have dinner, like by the beach, by the or, beach or something. Yeah. And now that all the restaurants are closed, it's like, well, really the only thing to do is go home and yep. you know, either pick dinner here or order from someplace you like to eat. Yep. So let me yeah. get uh, Kath Butcher said their Hobby Lobby reopened. That's awesome. Going through they are. They're still closed. Uh, Mary said, hey, Kath, hope you're doing great. She's from San Diego, so you can Shinoda. utilize Shinoda down in San Diego. Yes. yes, they are a wholesaler, so you have to have a wholesale. You have to have a business license or your federal tax ID number to shop there. But then, oh, my yeah. word, mm -hmm. you're probably never going to want to go back. Um, let's do lavender. Debbie asked, do you cover the back of your wreaths? No. no. In three years, I've never covered them. I'm trying to think. To. Unless it's like on a like a board or a rail, and it's that's the only area that's covered it, just because that's part of the wreath um, frame. So I'm just going to lift all the stacks out. So it's just kind of shake and jiggle. And if you hold it like this, you can kind of take your pipe cleaner and you can just go right between your stacks mm -hmm. and then you can just twist them. Four, five. So this is my 18 by 24 inch cutting board. Um, these can get pricey. So a budget friendly alternative is just to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get either a three quarter inch, this one's three quarter inch wide, or what deep? Thick, yeah. Thick. Um, or an inch, and then have them cut your wood to 18 by 24 inches. Yep. And then, and then you can stand it down, you can, um, you know, stand lacquer it. it, you can put ruler measurements on it, whatever you want. You can kind of make it your own. So, and then I just add a C hook here. And then I added the little finishing nail here if we get to doing the Bodabra or the Probo ones with the floral wire, then it's all set up for that. So I just take my pipe cleaner and I'm going to hook it right here on my little C, my little C hook. And then I like to do it longer, the longer side. So you're just going to pick and alternate. This one kind of goes over here. You're gonna pull to fluff your tail in one direction and your loop in the other. Then go to the other side and go opposite. So we went tail here, loop here, 
we're gonna do tail here and a loop here so that what ends up happening is your loops are completely across from each other and so are the tails. So then when you go to your next one down, you're going to go opposite. So we did tail here, we're gonna go opposite here. So this will put this on the opposite sides. Go back to the other side and we're gonna do the exact same thing. We are going to yep. pull these opposite. Well, I mean, um, yeah, I believe she has done a video with for a rag wreath mm -hmm. with we've a rag done bow. Three. Yeah, I've done a couple. Yeah, we've done one just for the rag bow, mm -hmm. and then um, so I'm looking at how this is stacking. So as a designer, you can make executive decisions and change. You don't have to keep following the same pattern. Like if I did this, then all the black and white would all be on the same side, and then all the lavenders on the other. So you can change direction, like right now I'm gonna just, instead of having my loop over here, I'm gonna bring my loop over here so that it breaks up the black and white pattern. But what I do on one side, I have to do on the other. So you're gonna pull the other side over here. Same thing now, then what that did is it set this up so that my purple now is going opposite Purple opposite. Why are you doing that? Mary, yes, the florals at Shinoda are unbelievable. Um, they It's color themed for every row. So they have a white floral row. <laughs> yes. A yellow, an orange, a red. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's so, it's so nice. Because I can just walk in there and go, okay, if I want pink and orange and yellow you just walk into the pink section and it's every floral you could imagine that is pink and then same thing with purple and orange and white so um it's so amazing so now once you get them all done this is where you can take them and kind of you know manipulate them mm -hmm. to where you don't have you know same color tails facing each other your loops are completely mm -hmm. opposite Chris, I guess a C-hook is the same as a coffee cup hook. I've never yes, heard it. Yes, coffee cup hook. Yeah, it's the exactly. same. Exactly. Just an open-ended hook. Yeah. So to put those little nice arcs back in your ribbon, you just kind of run your fingers through them. And you can kind of put those little bends back in your ribbons. You want to make sure all your loops are open. Obviously, it's a little tougher to do the bottom ones because they're at the very bottom bottom. We'll pull these over so they're all separate and then once you're happy with the way everything looks one of the things that I do is while I'm looking at my bow is I'm looking at how are my tails spaced so I'm looking for an area where um, I'm not going to have an awful lot of tails so when I go to place my bow I'm not going to put the tails here I'm going to kind of I have this side mm -hmm. open more, so I want to make sure that when I'm laying it on the, the wreath that this area is open so it makes room for my sign. Otherwise you have tails hanging over and then you're fighting your bow, trying to figure out, you know, I, do I cut my tails, do I make them shorter? Just look at your bow and move the bow. It's easier to do that. So. I am going to usually I look for the flattest spot on my wreath. So I'm going to actually remove about three, no, remove all of my six interior ones. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off the six in the middle because your bow will generally take up the space of about three of them. And then our sign is probably going to get shifted a little bit off center. So all I'm doing is I'm just twisting them a couple extra times just to make sure that they're on there really good and cutting them just before the twist and then just pushing the little edge of your pipe cleaner back down towards the center. There we go. 
two more to go. And then I'm thinking just because this is naturally lying a little flatter, it's probably going to be my bow area. Go here. I have two places that can go, but I'm starting to like that one. So, because this is my area with the shorts, I'm going to make sure that that faces in the direction so that it can frame my sign and not cover my sign. And you can go right through your deco mesh, but you don't want to pull it all the way down to the frame. If you did that, you would collapse your bow. So I usually just float it right on top and then now everything is all super pretty. And then now we can look at the sign and figure out where we want to put the sign. So um, this sign comes with, this one came with holes already in it. I'm okay I think with using the ones that are there. If not, um, you can actually invest in metal hole punch pliers. You can go up to two point, what is it, 2.0 2 2 millimeter. Yeah. Um, Mine are 1.5 and that's just enough to get your pipe cleaner through them. It prevents you from having to use adhesive ties on the back. So then we know, if you haven't already noticed this, if you add your adhesive ties and add nothing else to it, over time, one of them or both of them will come off. So just being outside in the elements where it's hotter or colder, the tension strength that you might have this adhered to your wreath, one of them will pop off. So um, you can glue them or you can just take the, an extra step and just punch holes in your sign and then just put pipe cleaners right to that. And then you never have to worry if that's going to, um, going to happen while your customer has that wreath. Wanda, wow, that's awesome. She says, my hubby <clears throat> made me the bow fluff board, Yay. ribbon tower, and is just finishing my mesh holder. Talk about a girl in heaven. Oh, that is so awesome. awesome. Okay, so I'm like liking the way this looks. So I'm going yeah. to look at that as my placement. So Steve is nice enough to bring me black pipe cleaner, so I'm just going to go ahead and add them my sign and then I'm just going to go ahead and attach this right to my frame. I like going through my deco mesh instead of like trying to work around certain curls because then it guarantees that you're not going to have like holes um, like spacers where you have parted the ways so to speak to get your deco mesh to fit. Mm -hmm. So, and everything will start to lay nicer once we start to manipulate some of our curls to get them to lay where we want them to be. Yeah, Kay Prescott said that would definitely happen in the humid and hot south where I live about the ties being pop off. Pop I, off the yeah, I discovered that when I had some military wreaths that were sitting in my craft room and when I went to pull one of them down, it's like one of the ties had come off, the adhesive had come off, and it wasn't even outside, and I was like, wow, okay, I have to rethink things now, because I cannot have that happen. Mm -hmm. You don't want that to happen. Imagine your customer going, um, yeah, I have your wreath, it's gorgeous and everything, but your sign just popped off. Kind of what you don't want to have happen. So what I like to do is I like to pull my cruffles out around the sign and then kind of cause it to your bow to frame it a little bit more. So let me show you. There we go. There's that one. Because some people say, well, I have a hard time, like my sign gets buried 
in my deco mesh. Um, if you float your slime on top and then pull the deco mesh that you want out around that, um, you won't have a an issue with it being buried unless you're you're trying to make your sign go all the way down to the frame. So it doesn't need to touch like the frame flush. It just needs to be anchored to that. Right. So there's where it's looking right now. What do you think? Good? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So let me chuck these. Um, we didn't need our whole punch. So now we're going to go ahead and add in exterior tails. So I am not adding um, half bows to all of the outside ties. We are going to save some of the um, open spaces to add our florals. So we want to make sure that at least we're addressing the outside. So I've cut six each of our two and a half inch and these are cut to 13 inch pieces. So we're gonna alternate the colors. I'm trying to do this so you guys can see. So I won't open my pipe cleaner. I just fold my two and a half inch ribbon in half to find the midway point. And then that is gonna go right into your pipe cleaner. I just give it a couple twists. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull those so that they fan out away from the wreath. So it's to make the appearance of the wreath larger so everything is kind of spread out, it's like from going out from the center. So I'm gonna do that all the way around the outside. You mean alternate between the black and the purple, right? The black and purple, right. <clears throat> and then that's also setting it up for okay once you do that you know or do you want to add floral to this area and then maybe a bow to the next area which I think is originally how I have this planned is floral then um, it'll be a double bow so I'll show you how we do those and there's a couple different ways you can do that I think this one needs a little bit of ribbon, but it also needs a little bit of floral too. Do you guys have any questions mm -hmm. on anything? Cat's going with a purple themed video today. Yeah. <laughs> didn't start off that way. I was like, what were my two choices? Oh, a black and white and gray home sweet home or the purple, the purple floral. Yeah, but you've got the purple home sweet home behind you and then the other copy in front is lavender. Yeah. <laughs> Oop, I didn't dovetail this one. I didn't do this one either on this side. You can tell, like you're just used to it. So I think these are the last two I didn't do. It just makes for a finished wreath. WS, do you always use a two and a half inch uh, for tails? I've done mm -hmm. inch and a half. It just depends on the size of my wreath and what I have going on. Yeah. So if I have a really big sign and it's really like kind of way over here, I might use inch and a half because to use the two and a half, it would just look out of proportion with everything else. Mm -hmm. I try to keep everything realistic in um, size and proportion and scale. And make sure I hit all my points. Like and follow for the notifications. Share so that if you want this design, it's easier to find on your page. That's how, like when I first got started, if I saw a design I wanted to try, I would just share all their videos on my page. All it, is, all it does is become a place for you to go find them. It's so much easier. I do that with my recipes. And then black and white. And yes, I go under my bow and add the tails as well. It just kind of will add some more dimension to our bow because all the colors are present.
And if you just get yourself into the habit of as you're creating your wreaths, you do the same process, it just kind of helps you not to forget something. There we go. I was like, wait, I think I'm gonna come up short. Nope. And I love this ribbon, it's um, canvas. So it's a very well-made ribbon. And sadly, I think what we're gonna start to see is that expensive canvas ribbon is gonna go away. And now we're gonna get is like a polyester print, like put on the, like the plastic which I really don't like. Because I've seen that happen on some ribbon and you don't know about it until you get it and then you find out, hey, this is just a print, like a silk screen on top of stuff. And last one. And then we get to play with um, our florals and kind of come up with where do we want to put those at. They were sent to Ben said first time watching thank you for the great information. Oh you're welcome. Where are you from Debbie? So when I look at this I'm thinking okay let me pull these out what I want. has a really big pick in it. So, let me take one of these down, just cut it off so you can kind of pull it away from the bush and look, do you want to use the whole thing? Do you want to just use some of it? I'm looking at how this is constructed. So they added the leaves as like little offshoots but I'm looking at like, could I reconstruct that in a different method? So I'm thinking- Oh, you can't push them up? No, this is <laughs> one that does not have a little push up. So I think I might want, I'm just looking placement wise, this is kind of what I'll do. Is I'll kind of put these in a couple places. Like I always look at my bow as almost being like a floral creation. I'm liking this look a lot. Let me show you guys what I'm seeing. So let me try to do this. So let me try to tilt this so that you're seeing what I'm seeing, how those are. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think that one needs to come down a little bit. Oh, not yet. Okay. But I'm doing my triangle here. Yeah. If you do it here, then it, it impedes the sign. Gotcha. Here okay. it doesn't, okay. here it doesn't. I know what you're saying, it's like, it almost needs to be something here, but. You can do other little four in there too. Yeah. So I'm thinking I'm gonna put these guys, and sadly we're gonna have to really deconstruct these because you can't push the leaves up, which is always what I encourage you to do. Really, you couldn't slide it back in and push them up? Mm -mm. The whole s the stem on this is too thick. Too big. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Normally you can, but nope, not in this case. So we said, I think here. So Debbie is from New Baltimore, Michigan. So welcome, Debbie. Welcome, Debbie. Thanks for joining us. So let me pull these ones off, and we'll cut that down. So, I've added this here, add this, kind of looking at like where can I place it. This will have to be cut down too tall. So somewhere in here somewhere in there and then we'll add our floral to that and then we can start adding some other pieces of floral so let me go ahead and actually adhere these 
So I'm gonna do, I have my glue skillet, which is here. And I'm actually just going through and placing this Let's into see. my deco mesh. <clears throat> yep, the stem right in the deco mesh. It works so good because it's kind of like a webbing almost. But I also cut them down so that they don't go through the other side. But I put a lot of glue on it and I use Gorilla Glue. So these are actually going in the places where my inter my inner pipe cleaners work. Yep, she only did the tails on the outside because the sign takes up most of the inside and then she's putting florals in there too. Yeah, I wanted to really incorporate some florals. So oh, that's a good question. What's um, that? What was it? Uh, Bobby Brooks asked Kat, can you talk about the triangle? The triangle, yes. So this is what they'll teach you if you go to floral school is when you're designing anything. A, you always want to use odd number items because like items in threes and fives. So when you're adding ornaments or florals or bulbs, you want to do them in odd numbers. It kind of goes against Steve because he's a very symmetrical kind of guy. It needs to be balanced, but it draws the eye in because you're looking something's not right it's not symmetrical it's not perfect so it makes you look at it more and so we're kind of doing the same thing here except our bow is another floral so what you can do is you work within triangles so if you have a bow here you want to either you want to create a triangle so by adding the two florals with the bow here's our triangle we could come in and add additional florals in like here and here and here, and then you have another triangle, an odd number type of design pattern going on within your wreath. So it's just draw your eye into the design visually. Yeah. So great question. So now I'm just kind of coming in and I'm gonna add some leaves and I cut them down. So I'm gonna add these to the undersides of my floral since they were not all part of the same pick. Doing the exact same thing, just adhering that to my deco mesh, but underneath the floral, cause the, the leaves go with this particular design. So I'm gonna add another one. I'm always playing with placement. So it's somewhere in here. So having the glue skillet is nice because it's just kind of like you dip it in the glue and then you can just kind of go ahead and you place it where it needs to go. And then as it's drying, you're good. So we'll do another two to the other side. So this is me deconstructing flowers to make something that I was unable to do just because of how they were created. There we go. Also a great thing about your glue skillet is in three years, I have never burned myself with the glue skillet. Because generally you're working with an end and I keep my glue skillet hot enough to keep the glue melted, but not enough to burn, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then you can just take all your threads once you have them all, and just throw them back into the glue skillet and just remelt. Susan, um, she does have a pick machine and she's used it before, but really, I mean, how many people out there have a pick machine? How many people can afford a pick machine? And how many people use them? Just a few. There's, a, there's some people who do use them and I would use them in doing centerpieces where you're trying to poke it into dry floral or, or into grapevines. Yeah. But again, what I found 
is I can show you how to use it, but then you, you kind of miss what would happen to people who couldn't afford to use a pick machine. So I just try to keep things real. So we can do both. It's just a matter of... Um, and pick machines are close to $200. So. 250 Yeah. And I think Michaels had them when Michaels was going out of business with their floral part. Um, and some people got them for like $50. So for them, that was good. I happened to get mine at Hobby Lobby. And I got it, I think, at 50% off. Yeah, I think we got it for like 120 or something. And I've never used it. I pulled it out of the box. I played with it. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it's always been... Not everyone can afford one, so um, it's just difficult that way. I'm just kind of looking, kind of playing with um, <clears throat> placement of the leaves. Again, I'm picking odds, so I'm doing three leaves for each one of those bunches. And then I'll go in and I'll add <clears throat> some double bows, and then we'll add some floral to the outside. So we'll take this and kind of bring it out. But so far, what do you guys think? Give it like gloves. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Because then this will tell me where else I need to add more. Okay. So, set that aside. This is the way I've worked it, is I was going to do double bows in half of the outside. And so what a double bow is, is you create two 16 inch pieces. So these are inch and a half cut to 16 inches. You're gonna kind of set it up the way you would for a half bow, which is bring your tails together, come up to about two inches from the point that you gather it. So from here to here, exactly two inches. Just kind of hold that. Do the other side exactly the same way. This is really thick ribbon. And then you kind of put them together like this. The reason why it's not called a bow is because a normal bow has two loops and two tails. This has four tails. So this is a double bow in certain aspects. So it's just gonna kind of create a very nice visual effect. And this is going to go directly in on some of these um, outside pieces. So I'm going to add the black and white one right here to pull the black and white color down. I'm trying to find pipe cleaner. I think you said you were going to do like every other one, right? Every other one. Yeah, and then we'll fill the mm -hmm. rest with florals. Yeah. Cheryl, so that's just the general idea about the triangle design. Mm -hmm. You don't have to follow that for every wreath. You're the designer. You decide to do yep. whatever you want. And Kat has done bows where she's done a big one on the top left and on a bottom right. Yep. And just and done two. Yep. Because it, it still looks proportionate, but that's just a general design rule to, to kind of follow. It's just designer's choice. Yeah. I always say that. There is no hard set fast rules for anything. You know, you're the designer. It's up to you. Create whatever you feel inspired to create. Um, I'm just showing you different ways, different techniques. So there is like what it looks like when you have a double bow. So it kind of fans the tails out to fill that space. Mm -hmm. So if we skip that and go into our next area, I'm going to add a lavender colored one. So it's kind of going on top of black. the black and white. So I paired these to go. Um, so you're mixing colors. Your purple is going over your black and white, and your black and white is going over your purple. No, these are just purple going over black and white, and the black and white going over black and white. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. Yeah. It, that's just how it's. But because whatever you pair them with, whether it's black and white and purple, that's your color theme anyway. So I will fan these out once they get in. So are your two and a half inch cut to 13 inch? And two and a half are 13, the inch and a half are 16. Gotcha. And so I have two of every color I want to put in there. But you can just do half bows and that would be fine. 
and then I am twisting my pipe cleaners off, still tucking the, the back of it behind your double bow, and then just fanning out your loops. So this one's got a lot of ribbon, a lot of floral. I like to play with the design to where everything works together. I don't like to you know, lay down a deck of mesh base and then completely cover it up. Um, I like to break it up. Um, these ones are gonna go there. I'm like just pairing off my black and white. And then we'll do this one here. So I'm gonna pull this one under my bow. So we'll do the exact same thing. So I have like two of the patterns with the black with the white dots and then two with just solid lavender. So I'm just breaking those up. What do you guys think of the design so far? Like? probably more than I generally put in most of my wreaths. I usually just do a sign, um, a bow sometimes, sometimes no sign, sometimes no bow. It just depends. Mm -hmm. So these will all be florals, which will be nice. Yep, okay, the inch and a half ribbon for the bows, or for those double bows, are cut at 16 inches. Yep. Yes. So we did that. This is going to be our lavender, or let's do this one, black and white. I'm like trying to, okay, and then lavender over here. That'll work because I'm trying to like, I want to see all four different colors, but then kind of separate them as well. So I'm going to go over here. It's easy to find them when you know that all you're doing is pairing these with black and white. Mm -hmm. And Pat, yeah, all the double bows are half inch ribbon, or inch and a half ribbon, sorry. Inch and a half inch cut and to half. 16 inches. Yep. You don't have to cut them, you can just like make a, a regular bow and put them in like that. I just like to make them a little bit visually interesting. So doing a double bow is a little bit different. You could come in with flex tubing and add flex tubing in here to keep the cost down. Um, but now everything is like prices are going up for craft supplies. And then of course the quality is going down. So it's challenging now as a wreath maker to come up with something good quality. Um, Cause I, I'm all about the quality. But you can make some really cool stuff on a budget. Like we're gonna go back and do some wreaths on a budget tutorials and show you how to make some really cute designs that are like under ten or fifteen dollars in supplies. So look for those coming up. more to do. So you can kind of see where I've added the colors all the way around. And then we're going to mix this one underneath. Such a shame that sometimes you can't see all the, the stuff like you have like ribbon tails or you know cute effects that go under the ribbon but I'm hoping some people will look. Okay. So now let's add some more florals to those outside. So in order to add the florals, I need to get the pipe cleaners out of the way. So to do that, I need to remove the pipe cleaners. 
which is just go ahead and do your twist them and then cut them off. I'm like looking at what other colors I want to incorporate. Do you see something I'm missing? No. Oh, because I see you like looking. Up. Oh, you've already left open, like I said, with the other, every other one, two and a half for your other four. Yeah. <clears throat> and I might even just pull, like here, I might pull these down or pull it this way and add more. Because, like, this one's right underneath one of them so I might just expand that floral and make it go out a little further. We shall see. Okay. Last one. Yep. And then we can add more floral. You could come in with Roses would be really pretty. Um, I think I have one or two ranunculus that I might add in here with some more floral. Mm -hmm. I have a tendency of like I focus on the areas where you can see them more, like here, here, and here. Maybe a little bit here. I might just extend this, like I said, in this, and just make them go elongate out. But let's remove all these. We have some lavender that we can add. So let me look at these. Two. One, two, three. Because visually they're longer. This one's weird. Came from someplace. Um, we have delphiniums we can add. I'm just kind of looking at the colors. I'm still liking the purples. So I'm thinking Rhinoculus paired with. Paired with what? Not roses. I think of some of these, some heather. So let me go ahead and take this one out. We'll cut the stem down. Let me add this in here. Do I want to add that there? I want to add it here. Decisions, decisions. Maybe a lavender and then a purple one. Yeah, I like that. Sometimes you just have to swap, see which one you like better. Ooh, I really like this one down here though. Okay, that's what we're doing. Karen, no problem. She said, oh, wait, I'll have to watch the replay. Yeah, pretty much done. I'm just adding some last minute florals to this design. So I'm just kind of playing with the flowers that are in the actual sign. So I'm just making sure that these are all opened up. So I think Michael's actually puts together really cute little bundles of florals that are all color coordinated and I think that's where these came from. They came with some purple roses that we had used before. And let's add some heather. That's pretty thick. Huh? Right. It's just because they have them all fastened in here. So you gotta kind of pull them all apart. So let's add this. Now it's just the fun part of just experimenting and playing. 
with adding different, um, like, I liked both of those. Let's see, was there another one? Yes. So we're going to take, you'll see that a lot of times I buy a lot of floral and I'll just kind of pull them apart and use what I want. So I'm not really over concerned if there's a color in it I don't like. I'm like, I'll just dissect that um, pick, yeah. pick and just pull out the florals that I like. So let me show you what I've kind of done so far is I've added some heather to these ranoculus that are here. We'll add some. And do the same thing here. And we'll add another one. Now you're just adding depth and texture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just kind of playing with... More dimension. Yeah, like, do you want to add some, some floral to the bottom? Which I kind of like. <laughs> so I'm like, eh, don't second guess it. Just glue them in. And again, it's just kind of taking some of that fun stuff, like the heather that's in here. Like this. And we'll incorporate some in here along with, I just have it stuck there. It's not staying there. But we'll probably add something in here. I'm trying to find. Here we go. We'll add something in here. So I'm just kind of placing them. Take this other one and add it over here with some lavender. But it needs some like little baby white flowers. So I just haven't figured out if I want stargazer lilies or delphiniums in there. Decisions, decisions. Here's the way to figure it out, right? Probably stargazer lilies because they're smaller and they look a little more white. We'll try. Oh yeah, much. But these ones now you can actually play with the, um, the greenery. So these ones you can actually push up. So we can put some greenery in. That looks really nice. Okay, executive decision. <laughs> We're gonna um, add some stargazer lilies to this, along with some heather. And thankfully, here's another tip when you're looking at florals, make sure that your florals are wired so that you can bend them to get them to, you know, go in a direction you want. Because you don't want to have something, you know, that's way too long sticking out the side. Nope, not there. Let me add another piece of lavender. So like the lavender, I can take and just kind of bend to the side. And I'll kind of show you what we're doing. Move these to the side. Grab one of these. I'm trying to move these so you can kind of see. So I can do this side over here. There's where the stargazer mm -hmm. lily came into play. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think you're missing something right on the other side by the bow. By the bow. Where? 
on the other side? Here. Oh, I know. Yeah. That's where I'm working right now. Okay. I'm just trying to find one that has three. Like most of these only have two. Like that's a three. And it never fails. It's always the ones with the price tag. <laughs> so we'll trim this one. And I'm just pulling out all those other florals that were there. Making my greenery go in the direction I want. So it's not just hanging out the bottom. So you can kind of manipulate it a little bit. And add some more heather. And some lavender. <laughs> Sharon Burkhardt said, surprise, I just found you. I'm way late. Oh, that's okay. No, it's just Sharon. She just did a surprise kind of Saturday video. I was like, well, if I want to make a wreath. And I'm like, well, why don't we just do a live and turn it into a tutorial? Like how to take a deco mesh and turn it into a floral, I guess. It's kind of where this is evolving, right? Mm-hmm. This we've added some too. Jean, Jean just said the same thing. Surprise, I'm late, but we'll watch replay. <laughs> it's okay. No problem, Jean. Debbie said, absolutely beautiful. So we're just adding more to the. I'm like kind of making my floral little arrangements that I have going in those sections kind of symmetrical. Let's see. Don't want. Sometimes I just want to see what ends up happening if I don't use certain things. Sometimes you just have to break them down so they come in pieces like you want them. Like I don't want this whole giant piece, but I want to add one more bud. So I'll show you what I was doing. Let me spin this around. Almost done. Mm -hmm. one, yeah. one or two more. Just this one and one right there. So these are simple. I had, here we go, stargazer. Sometimes the, um, the leads can be a little long. And we'll just add these underneath. So the stargazers were perfect for this design. You had a good call, Steve. Hey, Debbie. Cousin Debbie's on. Oh, hi, Debbie. That was awesome because you got to meet her last year. Yeah. Well, it's almost been a year, huh? I know. Um, Sharon said, uh, I bought some six-inch burlap rolls from AC Moore on my way home from Florida in March. Ooh. Will Kat ever do anything with six-inch burlap to yeah. show us how to use it? Yes, I love using the six inch burlap. We need to make some more burlap rays. So yes, absolutely. Because I have pretty much almost all the colors of six inch burlap. So yeah, that would be nice to get that out of my craft room <laughs> and into a design. So absolutely. So this is a nice design knowing that all the way around it somewhere you have little floral elements. So we're not using those or that. We need a three. There we go. So these Stargazer bunch came from Hobby Lobby when Hobby Lobby was open. So remember that Hobby Lobby has their florals on half price every every other every other week. So 
I would encourage you to pick up, like, buy them in the bunches and not just, like, in the singles. Mm -hmm. It's, um, you'll get a better value for them that way. So I just look and kind of play with where are they laying, how are they laying. pieces of lavender and then we're done. I'm just trying to incorporate a little bit of purple in all of Laurel. I think so. There's a lot of purple. <laughs> there is a lot of purple. Okay. And last one. So I'm just taking my lavender and just kind of arcing them. So that when I tuck them in. That's awesome, huh? uh, Nancy. She says Hobby Lobby opened up here in Ohio Tuesday, I think. <clears throat> yeah, we're really hoping ours will open up. Yeah, it's like I ordered florals from them online. Kind of disappointed with what I got because I think we're a little bit more savvy in like how we'll, what we'll pay for. Mm -hmm. I'm just pulling all my florals out of my blue threads. So I'm going to take all of this right here. See all of this excess glue? It's a big glue ball. You just throw it back in your glue pot. And I'm just using the last couple ones I cut, but kind of didn't put anywhere. all of our glue throw it back in the pot and this is how you dissect your florals and you never throw them away you just kind of figure out a new a new way to use them there we go so all the way around we have added this is just like my last day lily Yeah. We are finished. I can't wait to show you guys what it looks like now that we can. Roxana, that's what she uses her glue pot for, the glue skillet. What's that? She just dips uh, the pick right into the glue so skillet. much easier than trying and to she glue it. pushes it kind of right into the deco mesh. And once it hits the deco mesh, it, it acts as like a netting or a webbing, and it glues right into the deco mesh. Absolutely. Okay, so let me show you. This is what we finished. You can hold it up with them real quick. Yeah, I will. So this is what it looks like. I keep moving stuff off. It needs to get thrown away. What do you think? Yeah, it's gorgeous. Okay, now we'll put it up. And show you. Oh, that was a leaf that was stuck to the side. Trying to get it to sit on my screw. And then you have all these. And there we go. And then just make sure that you pull all your ribbons out. You've de threaded all your glue threads. So when you take your pictures, those little things don't become something you see. You want to make sure all your ribbons are available. I'm just pulling off all my glue threads. What do you guys think? It's beautiful. Guess a beautiful. Said another winner. Sam's a beautiful. Does this thing? Short and sweet, right? Mm-hmm. who do you buy your tails from? Tails. Because as far as a ribbon, it's this was all craft outlet. For the except most part. for the reshop. But re you can and that was just the solid lavender. Because you can get that um 
do if craft hell is closed right now for online ordering you can do the reshop you don't need a seller's permit to order from them they do have an 89 dollar minimum so that you get free shipping you don't have to order 89 dollars worth of craft supplies but for us it's pretty easy um and then you get free fedex or ups shipping um trying to think i know that the, the W's and Welcome is just a little covered up, but you can move the foils over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just, it's, I'm trying to get it situated on the hook correctly. Yeah, there you go. There we go. And then we'll burn this this way. There we go. Um, so, not craft outlet. The race shop would be my next. Um, if the race shop doesn't have anything, you can go to Deco Exchange. You mm -hmm. could also go to Trendy Tree. Um, neither one of those require you to have a wholesale license, and all the Deco mesh and ribbon is is pretty much the same kind of quality. Um, oh, Jean said rails, not tails. <laughs> rails. Where do you buy your rails from? Uh, depends on whoever has them. Door or what ideas by door, or doors what idea? Mm -hmm. She keeps changing the name of her business. Or um, Shore Life Creations, Betty's doing rails now too. So for me, it's if I, I'm looking for someone who will ship it fairly quickly. I don't want to wait a week or two weeks for something I order. I want it within that time frame. Because um, either A, somebody has seen a design that you've done in the past and they want something replicated, like you could get the purple welcome on a rail and create a rail from it. So you want them a quick turnaround. And right now, everything is just taking a crazy long amount of time to get shipped. Oh, thank you, Annette. She said Wilds Creek has rails. Is that on Etsy? Yeah, they, I'm assuming. Wilds Creek. Is it their own website or an Etsy shop? Yes. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Any other last minute questions you guys have? I'm trying to think tomorrow is private group training so we're doing a sunflower wreath um so it'll be not deco mesh poly poly deco mesh the rubber deco mesh so we're making sunflowers there and then um monday for private group we're doing uh photo editing using some apps to edit photos so mm -hmm. if you guys are interested my private group is available on my website, so it's Cats Creations, the letter N, the word more.com. So just scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll find out all the information about the private group. Um, yeah, I've had that pinned on there for a while too. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. I've hit everything else. So hopefully you guys like the design and uh, look for some posts coming soon about some challenges that you guys might have for some designs you'd like to see. So I'm fine if you guys want to do more rag race, we can do that, we can do rag bows. Um, those are all easy. They look more harder than they are. So once you understand the process, you're like, got that. Yep. Anything else? That's it. Okay, everyone, we'll have a great rest of your weekend. Hopefully we'll get back to normal soon. Until then, talk to you guys soon. Bye. Yeah.